So, the other day I did a video on the birth of Marvel in the Cold War. And it got a big response, and it turns out a bunch of you guys out there like comic books, uh, like I do. Um, and of course, we saw a great episode of The Point, which you should check out on Town Square, where they talked about the politics, the Avengers. And actually, just last night, uh, poor Anna butchered uh, a story on comics, which is cool, I get it, that's not her thing, that's not why she's there. Don't feel bad about it, Anna. Uh, but one of the things that's been kind of bugging me is this kind of assumption, not only here on the Young Turk stuff, but really all over the place, that Captain America is conservative. He's not. In fact, here's my proposition. Captain America uh, should be the symbol of the new progressive movement. Uh, if we're going to have a superhero, Jank seems to be a little obsessed with the Hulk. That's cool. I get it. Uh, I'm going to throw out Captain America. Now, people assume he's conservative because he's, of course, dressed up like an American flag and he's all military. Uh, but here's the thing you got to understand. Captain America is not uh, a modern creation. He's not this new uh, conservative military that we think of today. Captain America is from World War II. Captain America is an FDR guy. And back in World War II, it was the Democrats who embraced uh, the military, and, and, and really even things like jingoism in World War II. And Captain America is clearly a fan of FDR. Now, one thing I should say about discussing any comic book character who's been around this long uh, is that you can kind of argue anything, because he's appeared in, in thousands of comic books written by dozens of different authors. So you could go back and pick and choose things and, and argue that he's conservative. Uh, but I don't think that's valid. Uh, Captain America is an FDR liberal. And uh, I wish people would stop just assuming he's conservative. Uh, for one thing, uh, look at who he fights. Captain America is constantly fighting hate groups. In fact, one of his big recurring villains early on is the hate monger, who goes around and kind of stirs up this irrational hatred. And if you read any of those comics, it's very, very difficult uh, to see him as anything but very conservative. In fact, back in the time when the conservatives were so angry about things like racial integration, uh, Captain America is frequently going to take stands and give speeches about the need to accept everybody and uh, uh, the importance of America being a land of equality and opportunity. Uh, uh, and he's going to get uh, uh, kind of a sidekick uh, in the Black Panther in the 1960s, um, who's a black guy. Uh, and then after the Black Panther kind of goes off in his own direction, he's going to be replaced by Sam Wilson, who's not only a black guy, he's a black guy uh, from the ghetto with a criminal history, who uh, Captain America is going to forgive and overlook all that and see the good in him. And at the time this is going on, the Captain America and the Falcon stories, this is a very, very political statement, and it's a very liberal political statement. In 1974, uh, in, in Captain America number 180, uh, Captain America is going to uh, reject his status as a symbol of America. Now, he does this in response to Marvel's version of Watergate, where it turns out that Richard Nixon um, is actually the head of this massive crime organization uh, that had been around a while. Um, but uh, far from supporting uh, the Republicans and, and, of course, the conservatives in this, in this instance, Captain America is going to ditch his uh, classic uniform. He's going to call himself Nomad, explaining that Nomad is a man without a country. Um, and he is going to reject this. And he's going to claim that he represents the ideals and values of America, not necessarily what America does at any point. Um, he's actually going to do this again in the mid-1980s, uh, uh, around the time of Iran-Contra. Uh, at that point, he's going to become the captain, uh, again, rejecting his his uh, uniform and his identity as as uh, directly associated with America. Uh, it is interesting to note that it is during Nixon and Reagan uh, and their scandals that Captain America gives up his uh, uh, direct representation of America. Uh, that must be because he's so conservative, right? No, nah, dude's a total lib. Uh, speaking of the 80s, in the 80s he begins fighting a group called the Watchdogs. Uh, the Watchdogs believe in strict enforcement of family values, and they denounce and are violently opposed to pornography, obscenity, sex education, abortion, homosexuality, and the teaching of evolution. I, I mean, is, that's the conservative movement of the 1980s, and this is who Cap is fighting against. Now, I should say something about the violence. Yeah, he's violent. It's comic books. Get over it. 
that's what their kids buy them and read them uh, because there's violence in them. Um, I don't think that you can make the argument that anybody who's violent in a comic book is necessarily conservative. Uh, by that logic, even people who are obviously super liberal, like, say, the X-Men, um, uh, then become conservative because they're violent. No, that's just the nature of the medium. Get over it. We're also going to see Captain America reject vigilantism uh, in, in the 1980s, which was this conservative idea that, that, that society is collapsing and, and the criminals have won and we've got to go out and, and uh, uh, defeat them. The Punisher actually comes out of this movement. Um, he's a conservative character. Uh, uh, but Captain America is going to develop kind of a major nemesis uh, during this period called the Scourge of the Underworld. And Captain America is going to clearly reject vigilantism and clearly embrace things like the rights of the accused and the fact that an eye for an eye is not the right way to go, that we have to be better than our enemies. Uh, liberal ideas. Also, and I mentioned earlier in the 1980s, the cap, uh, Captain America becomes the captain and, and, and gives up being Captain America for a little while. He is replaced by a guy named U.S. Agent. Now, U.S. Agent is the Captain America that everybody seems to assume Captain America is when they don't know anything more about him. U.S. Agent is really, really conservative, and he's a real jerk. Um, he's jingoistic, he's violent, um, he's judgmental, uh, he, he, he is kind of the stereotypical, uh, over-the-top uh, conservative. And he is a bad guy, and Captain America rejects him. Captain America uh, is clearly a, stands in opposition to him. Now, U.S. agent actually stays around and becomes this interesting uh, kind of ultra-conservative character, who at times is a rogue, and at times is written, in, in my opinion, really well, uh, and has some uh, fairly poignant stories over over the, the over the twenty or yeah twenty five years or so he's been around. Um, so those characters do exist. Just Captain America isn't one of them. Now, recently we've seen the Marvel Civil War, which is where the government uh, tries to register all the superhumans. Uh, uh, and Captain America resists this. He is, and this is during the, the time of the Patriot Act. This is Bush, right? Um, this is an, an invasion of our civil liberties. Uh, Tony Stark, Iron Man, supports it, uh, and Captain America rejects it. Um, this is clearly Captain America rejecting the expansion of government authority that we saw under the Bush administration. And in fact, at the end of the Marvel Civil War, uh, Captain America is going to end up getting killed. Um, the death of Captain America, uh, which Marvel at one point says that, that, that this is a direct response to America having lost its way. This symbol of Captain America dying is, is their commentary on where America is at the time. So you got that? Nixon... Reagan and now Bush have all led to the end, granted temporarily, of Captain America. This is a liberal character. Finally, recently, just a couple of years ago, we get an issue, just, just in case you're still confused, you still don't trust me, we get an issue where Captain America fights, you guessed it, the Tea Party. Yeah. Uh, they are rioting, they're out of control, they have their own Glenn Beck character who's actually very creepy and extremely Glenn Beck-like. And Captain America is uh, going to get mixed up uh, fighting this riot uh, where these people are carrying signs that say things like, teabag the liberals before they teabag you. Look, Captain America is everything that liberals used to be and progressives should become now. Uh, he, his patriotism is based on the actual values and principles this country is supposed to be based on. Um, he fights aggressively. Uh, for uh, equality, equality of opportunity, uh, equality based on things like race and condition. Um, uh, he's a supporter of our civil liberties. He rejects um, uh, expansion of government power. Um, but he also supports uh, us working together to try to accomplish things. He's an FDR liberal, and I think that uh, to the extent that we should embrace any comic book character, uh, we progressives should embrace Captain America. So, Jank, I think Captain America should be your favorite superhero. In fact, as jingoistic as you are, Jank, um, if you knew anything more about him than just what you saw in uh, the two movies you've seen him in, you'd love the guy. He's exactly what you want us to become. Anyway, I'm Professor Rich. Uh, maybe I should start uh, TYT Comics or something, but uh, I hope you learned something.